In this example, we have two data sets, which are the dependent variables from one independent variable. So we have these two sets and we want to compare the two lines of best fit that represent these data. So let's first of all plot the data and see what they look like. So we go to insert, I've highlighted the cells, we go to insert, we go to scatter plot and here we've got our um, graph for that. So on the x-axis we've got the x values, on the y-axis we've got the y values and here we've got the correlation between y1 and x and y2 and x here. And of course uh, we can put in some trend lines we see that there is probably a negative correlation going on. So for the blue ones, I just pick one. The blue one is Y1. Right mouse click on it and add the trend line. I want to see the R square value and the equation on the chart. So that would be here for the Y1, the equation. That is the trend line. And we do the same thing for the y2. Again, we add a trend line with the r square value and the equation for it. So that would be the y2 value here. Okay, and we see that in both cases, we've got a negative correlation. We can look at the r square value that is 0 0.94 and 0 0.91. And uh, this indicates that we've got strong or very strong negative correlations. But the question is, are these two values, are these two gradients actually, and we are only looking at the gradient in this example, are these two gradients the same? Well, very clearly we can say the gradient for M1 for the Y1 value that is negative 0 0.458 whereas the gradient for M2 is negative 6, 0 0.620. I just round here a little bit. So these gradients are not the same. That's very clear. But is it because this is just simply due to sampling error or is it because the gradients are actually different? And we can't, as with hypothesis testing, we can't directly compare the samples. We have to basically make judgments about the population gradient for the population of all the gradients for the best line fit. So we need to make estimates for the population gradients M1 and M2. And I indicate that we are dealing with population here by these capital M's. So now in order to compare these things, we always set up a null hypothesis. And we say that the population uh, gradient for the experiment with Y1 is actually the same as the population gradient M2. So that would be M1, the population gradient equals M2. The alternative hypothesis H1 would be that they are not the same. M2. And as uh, per users, we will usually set a significance level alpha, that's our type 1 error, which is in this case 0 0.05. And our decision rule is if we find a p-value, the probability that these two uh, values 
are the same given that we accept the null hypothesis if the p value is smaller than alpha we will reject the null hypothesis if the p value is larger than alpha then we fail to reject the null hypothesis so how can we do that well we can actually assume that there is a sort of a normal distribution between the different uh, population gradients here and we can do a simple t-test and the equation for this t-test would be the t-score in a case like that would be the absolute difference between the sample gradients and I'll write it like that divided by the square root of the standard error for y1 squared plus the standard error for y2 squared. That will give us a t-score and then we can convert the t-score into a p-value just simply by using our uh, t distribution. We also need one more information and that is the degrees of freedom for this conversion and that is defined as the sample size for 1 for y1 plus sample size for y2 minus 4 because we've got for each experiment we've got two parameters gradient and y-intercept that we need to measure and we can quickly calculate that we've got nine observations for y1 and the same number for y2 so we would have 9 plus 9 minus 4 so a degree of freedom equals 18. Now we can calculate very easily these differences because we've got already the um, the gradients here so we could do that so we need to find out the uh, standard errors for these uh, two experiments and we can do that by using the data analysis function in Excel so uh, this comes with the uh, tool pack uh, if you haven't installed it uh, definitely worth doing and I'll leave a link in the description uh, that shows you how you can do that okay so we do the data analysis we go to regression okay so uh, here the program asks us uh, which values we need to uh, want to uh, do the regression on now we need to do this program twice because it can only do it for one set of data at a time so let's do y1 regression analysis first and it says input y range so here we go input y range uh, i take the label with me and left mouse click drag it down uh, input x range again i do the same thing here drag it down i've got labels i have a confidence interval like that so that looks pretty good so where do i want it i want this in let's say uh, pro pro probably here down here and let's go for that so i get my output for the y1 and i definitely need to say that is the summary output uh, where we look at y1 correlated with x so again we've got our value for the gradient here and we've also got the standard error that is the one that we need for our t-test and now we need to do exactly the same thing but for y2 so again we do the data analysis we do that uh, we 
don't want the y range, we just do this one here for y2, and that would be the c values. Okay, so we've got this, and we want to put this uh, close to here. We want to put it here, and let's see what we get for this one here. Uh, so here we've got again our the gradient and the standard error here. That is what we want. And again, this was here y2 correlated to x. And now we can use our equation that we have written here for the t-score. Let's uh, write this in Excel. So we calculate the t-score. That is equals, we want the absolute value, the absolute difference between the y1 minus the gradient for y2, close the bracket, and square root of the standard error for y1 here, put that in here, this value to the power of 2, plus the standard error for y2, that's this value, to the power of 2 and close the bracket. So that would be our t value. Let's evaluate that. So this is our t value and or the t score. And now we have to convert the t score into a p value and we can do that with the t dist function. So we convert that equals, so this would be our p-value, let's do this here, equals t dot dist, and we have a two-tailed test here. It asks us for the t-score that we just calculated, that is this value here, and the degrees of freedom, and we just calculated the degrees of freedom to 18. So this would be our p-value that we get here. So the p-value, p-value equals 0.0556-ish in this range. So the probability uh, that we find these two lines being the same would be 0 0.0556. Now we compare this p-value and we find that p is larger than our alpha value, which alpha was 0 0.05 that we set here and 0 0.0 0 0.556 is larger than 0 0.05. So this means we re fail to reject, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Or in other words, we believe that the populations for the gradient for experiment Y1 is indeed the same as the population for the gradients of for experiment y2. So this means actually these two trend lines, the gradients at least for these two trend lines, are not statistically different from each other. Or in other words, we have very good reason to believe that the gradients for these two trend lines are pretty close and we can't tell the difference between them. So I hope this makes sense. It shows you how we can use this data analysis tool pack to compare two trend lines, at least the gradients, uh, with each other. Of course, we could do a similar thing for the uh, intercept. 
uh, but I leave that up to you to find out whether the intercept would be different. The calculation would be exactly the same, only that we use the standard uh, error for the intercept uh, in both cases. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.